Hello, it's Sisfolk. Time to enjoy card making with me. If you are interested in learning all hacks for using solid stamps and basic shapes in card making, this video is for you. I will use Carla Creazzi's basics collection with basic squares and circles to demonstrate today. In my previous video I showed how to condition your stamps and use solid stamps to make swatches for different inks and papers. I recommend you to watch that video as well if you have troubles on stamping with solid stamps. In this video I give you tips as well as ideas to use these squares and circles. Also if you don't have this specific collection but use something similar that is already in your stash this video is interesting for you. Carla's basic collection also consists of three other stamp sets that I will show you in the next video to come. Hou die video in de gaten, want er zal een interessante giveaway zijn voor de Nederlandse en Belgische kijkers die mijn affiliate links gebruiken. This is a video that you want to see if you are a starter in card making, but also if you are an experienced card maker. There are chapters, so you can skip parts if you prefer. I also added English and Dutch subtitles. Click the CC button. Klik op de CC knop om de ondertitels aan te zetten. One of the techniques you can do with a solid stamp, big or small, is the kissing technique. For the kissing technique you need a background stamp. At least one with a pattern. I have some here that Carla Creatis has designed. Let me show you what fun stamping you can do with them. I'm going to stamp using the red versa magic ink. And I will immediately show you a print with the border stamp around it. For stamping the border I am using black versa fine ink for now, just for convenience. I like this ink for stamping crisp images but you can stamp with any ink you like. Now the kissing technique begins. To start we take a stamp with a lot of texture. I take the nice waves of the ocean stamp. I just leave the stamp on its acetate sheet, no need to take it off. Then we ink the part of the background stamp that we want to use for the print. Be sure that your solid circle stamp is completely dry and clean. This circle stamp we put carefully on top of our inked background stamp. They kiss each other so to say. Ink from the background stamp is now transferred to the solid stamp. See what happened? The lines from the waves are now in my circle. If the ink is a bit dry you can gasp over it and then stamp the stamp. I try to stamp it in the right spot while the camera is in front of my face. This is an awesome technique to make fun textured stamp images. You can also do this the other way around. Let's clean the solid stamp first. Baby wipe first, damp microfiber cloth next. If you want, you can also ink up the solid stamp to start with. Then kiss the stamp on a clean part of the wave stamp. We now have an inverted image on the solid stamp and now can make two different stamp impressions. The kissed circle we can stamp on a piece of paper. I could have used the clear block, but it is not necessary. See, we now have a nice sharp print. For this I better stamp the circle first and add the outline next, where for the first example it was easier to stamp the outline first and the solid kissed circle second. Forgive me if I don't position it correctly, I can hardly see what I'm doing. If you want it perfect, you can of course use a stamp platform and I will demonstrate that in a moment. This negative solid circle we can still use. We now have a gorgeous solid stamped circle with the waves texture in it. And again, this also works for other stamps. For example, this gorgeous flower background stamp. It is from the Kate collection. I aim for a flower on this background stamp and stamp this flower. 
Next, I add the same color of ink around it. I will show how you do it in, with the stamping platform. This wallpaper background stamp, also designed by Carla Creaties, I put in my stamping platform. The sticky side is down and the pattern side is up. I take the square stamp to demonstrate this one. I want this solid square stamp on this spot of the paper. So I place it there and close the lid. I remove the paper now. Let's check the spot where to ink up the background stamp. Here is the place where they kiss, so there is where the ink must go. Then kiss the stamps. Press down firmly. You already see the pattern is transferred to the solid square stamp. Then remove the background stamp. And add the foam back in. And the piece of paper. And now we can stamp on the paper. In the exact same place we chose beforehand. Carefully remove the paper. Now you have a patterned stamped square. You can repeat this and stamp on the other side of the paper as well. Or stamp on multiple cards for bulk stamping. Now I will demonstrate how you stamp the outline. We want to have it on the exact same spot. You can lay it down guessing if it is put straight. But while using this stamp platform anyway, or when you have difficulty seeing it, there are ways to fix this. To stamp the outline, I recommend to use the acetate backing of the clear stamps. Take it off, it is quite firm plastic. Lay it on top of your paper, then position the outline stamp on top. You can still shift, your paper won't get smudged. And looking at the shadow outline, you can see if it is positioned straight. Then you pick the stamp up onto the lid. Ink it up and stamp it right on top of that acetate sheet. This way you can see if it is aligned straight. If it is wonky, like mine is, then there is an easy way to stamp on the right spot. You just shift the paper to the middle and see if the pattern is exactly in the middle. I turn the paper to show it better. That's easy while it is a square anyway. You leave the acetate in the top left corner of the stamping platform and this is the position where we will stamp again. Because the square outline stamp is still in that spot in the lid. Having the paper on the spot we want to stamp, I can now remove the acetate sheet and stamp the outline on the right place on my paper. This piece of acetate we can clean in the same way as we do with the stamps and stick it back on the stamps in the package. There is another way to do the kissing technique. And this is an awesome way. I'm excited to show you this. Ink the stamp up with ink like normal. Then take a piece of paper. Just uh, take cheap printer paper. And tear off a piece. You don't need a whole sheet. Scrunch it up into a scrunched paper ball. We want lots of scrunches. Use that scrunch to dab some ink off the stamp. It is basically the same kissing technique as we did with the background stamps. Don't swipe, just dab. And dab again. With a clean part if you did not cover every bit. There is probably no need to dab a lot. Because this is a small stamp. Try and see for yourself. It is an amazing technique. And now watch how amazing this looks. Of course you can use other materials for this technique. You can try fabric or bubble wrap or leaves maybe. Give it a try. It looks like marble to me. Or the planet Mars. This little fellow can fly to Mars when I add it to a card. All kissing techniques I just showed I use to make Christmas ornaments on my cards. Some are kissed with different background stamps. One is done with the paper crunch kissing technique and a few are stamped solid with Craft Emotion snow paste on top applied with a stencil. 
All ornaments are heat embossed with distress glaze to make them even more shiny and deeper in color. And I added the cutest guinea pig to the card. Without that, this card would be boring. And see how cute it is! I added a bunny tail to the guinea pig. Just cut off a tiny piece of the pom-pom at the back and stick it to the card with a few glue dots. On one of the cards I ink blended Distress Oxide inks to give it more color. I cannot choose which card I like best. They are both favorites. To make these Christmas ornaments, start by stamping the solid circle first, or if you prefer the kissed circle. Then add the border circles next. You can, if you'd prefer, add some embossing powder or embossing glaze on top and heat set that. By adding texture to these circles with a stencil, you will make great ornaments. This is a new A6 Christmas stencil from Craft Emotions that I will be using. And Craft Emotions also has this new glitter snow texture paste that I will send, so I have just a sample. It's really glittery and also very soft stuff. It's so soft it feels like candy. I don't mind applying it with my fingers. I mostly find such things easier to apply with my fingers than with a spatula. To apply it quick, I can do it this way. I can see where to put the paste on the small dots. You can clean this stencil under the sink. Or use a baby wipe right after using. It dries quickly. When doing the next ornaments, I don't want to make a mess and apply paste on places where we need clean paper. So for that, I take the masks again that I made with the dies. If you don't have dies or a die cut machine, just stamp the stamp in the middle of a piece of paper and cut that out. That would also work. Now you can use this piece of paper as a mask that you can lay on top of the circle that you want to add paste onto. And voila, the mask is dirty, but the card stuck underneath is pretty clean. And the stamp is still nice and round. You can still touch up if you want or need to. If draw some boxes on top of the circles and draw lines with a ruler, you made it a Christmas card. The result will even be more beautiful when this dress glaze or embossing powder is added. This dress glaze works like a transparent embossing powder. So what I like about that is that you can heat emboss on top of colored ink. On the solid stamps you can choose to apply multiple colors of ink. You can ink directly on top of the stamp or apply it with a blending tool or with a brush. Blend different colors on top or next to each other and then stamp. But you can as well apply half first mark and half first magic ink. And that is what I'm doing right now. Maybe you don't see the reason now, but wait till it's finished. And if you're not fond of heat embossing, just do this with two shades of ink and skip the embossing part. On the transparent Versamark ink, the embossing glaze is light, and on the red Versamagic part, the glaze looks somewhat darker. This way, you get a shading effect. Let's make something spectacular and really fun. For this you need the circles, with only the outlines on them, and put them on clear blocks. You need four colors of ink. I take oxide inks for it, but it also will work with pigmented watercolor inks or pigment explosion powders. Some blue, yellow, purple and red we need next to each other. I have the color Salty Ocean, Mustard Seed, Adelaine's Potion and Candied Apple. I apply these colors close to each other, but they do not touch each other. It is best to not have them bleed into each other. For the paper you need watercolor paper. I used the Craft Emotions watercolor card paper 200 grams. It is very smooth, 
you can hardly see the difference with normal paper until you start to make it wet. Then you notice that it really is watercolor cardstock. We keep the paper dry and we spray a little water on top of the ink. Let's take the middle sized circle first. With this open shape we will pick up a bit of the ink that is sitting on my glass mat. With this stamp I scoop a bit of ink on all four corners on the circle. A circle has no corners of course, but all four colors must be on every quarter of the circle. Then you stamp this circle and immediately grab a wet brush and with this brush you smear the ink from the edge to the middle of the circle. When you have too much ink on the brush, you wash it clean and go on with that rinsed but still wet brush. It is okay if you leave one or two blank spots in the middle of the circle. That gives an idea of light or shimmer. So what you have made now is a soap bubble. Let's repeat this with the bigger circle. So you scoop a bit of blue, a bit of yellow and a bit of red and a bit of purple ink. It is exactly these four colors that make the difference. Apply enough ink to the stamp to make a stamp impression with a thick border. And with a wet brush, just let the ink flow. I am not really that good at watercoloring and that is okay. Let's just have fun and practice some more. Maybe I just used the wrong size brush. I clean the brush again after doing the purple and have a clean brush when starting at the yellow part. Let the ink flow and mix with adjacent colors. But try not to get a brown muddy color. You see in my glass mat that, are, that the red and the purple ink are mixing and creating a brown ink color. That's not the color we want. So just clean it up with a tissue. You will have to wait until the paper is dry before stamping a new bubble that overlaps another bubble. That's also because you don't want dirty ink colors. Intentionally leave two spots in the middle of the circle where there is no ink. And when you don't get enough pigment from the stamped circle, just pick a bit of ink from the glass mat with your brush. Start at the edge and spread it in the circle. Remind to clean the palette when the ink starts to look dirty. I like bright colors. That is why my bubbles are very saturated. Just try it out for yourself. You will like doing it. Actually, I'm very curious how your bubbles would look like if you do this. You can tag at sisvolk and at Carla Creaties if you post on Instagram so I can see your creations. Or share your card on Carla Creaties Facebook group. This lovely fish critter from the ocean series loved to live on this bubble background. The gorgeous fish is colored with Tombow alcohol markers and glued raised. The fish as well as a text balloon cover up bubbles and spots that were not to my liking. The bubble text balloon fits in great, as well with these thinking bubble circles. What the fish, it also fits in this text balloon. And the same text balloon is used on the envelope. Great spot to write the address. The fish on the envelope is stamped and colored with pencils. The bubble background is ink blended very lightly at the edges and trimmed half a centimeter smaller to leave a small white frame around the card. On the left I have Craft Emotions watercolor cardstock and on the right DCP printer paper. Now let's use a stencil in combination with the solid stamps. Put the stencil on top of the stamp. The clear stamps are very sticky, so they stay in place very easily. See, it's very sticky and we want that. Then add some ink on top of the stamp. I prefer to use a blending tool for that. The way you put the ink on the stamp will affect the way the ink looks on the paper. If you dab it, it will look different than when you just twist. Especially with distressed or water-based inks. You can use that in your advantage to create different effects. 
Look what a cool effect you get when you pull off the stencil. Now we have a circle with the stencil pattern on top. Press slightly harder in the middle to get a good impression. And take off the paper carefully. Remove the paper from the stamp and not the stamp from the paper. It is like taking off a patch. Do it carefully and get a smooth result. Stamped on the smooth printer paper, the print will look differently than when stamped on the watercolor cardstock. I stamped the same stenciled inked circles again to show what happens when you apply water to the ink. Using a water brush, but you can also use a normal brush, just as you prefer, you can spread the ink. I will start on the watercolor cardstock. You see that the ink reacts easily with the water and you can smear the ink on one way and soften it with the brush. Now I inked and stamped pretty dark, it would look better maybe with a lighter amount of ink. On the DCP paper I try to do the same, but because this is no watercolor paper you see that it hardly has any effect. The ink gets wet and reacts with the water, but does not float and spread like it does on the watercolor cardstock. So that's the difference that I wanted to show you. And adding a stencil to the stamp is also something you can consider doing with a basic splash stamp or with squares. I did the same with a lighter amount of ink on watercolor cardstock. And on the back side you see the ink is a lot darker and then the effect with the water brush is less nice. So with less ink you get a lighter and better effect. How great of a card it would make if you add a torn paper stamp with it and the giraffe coming out of it. But okay, that's something for another video. What I found out is that this square is square but this bigger square is just not square, it actually is a rectangle. All the rest are squares. Only the biggest solid and outer one are rectangles. Where you can position the square once in the stamp platform and stamp four times for this window, you cannot do this for the rectangle. You won't get this pattern. Well, you probably want it. If you would stamp in the way you would normally do with the square stamps in a stamp platform, when rotating the paper in the stamp platform, you would get something like this. And maybe I like this even better. You see that while rotating, the stamp stays on the same spot. But because it is a rectangle, it shifts and gives a geometric pattern. Not a window if you need that. To make a window, you position the stamp with even space from the border. Using a transparent grid is easiest. Then stamp the basic shape, turn the paper halfway round and stamp the second window. Then clean the stamp, lay the transparent grid back on top. Lift the stamp from the lid of the platform and reposition the stamp. You can stamp on the acetate first to see if you have the correct position. Finish the window by stamping the other two shapes while rotating the paper to the opposite corner again. Making a window with just squares needs only one time to position the stamp. Would you stamp with a rectangle shape, position it once and turn and stamp it on all sides, you would get this wonky window. I hope it's clear to you now. Look how awesome these cards turn out when we add these funny birds and Christmas hats. Or just use other stamps you have. These are from the popular box set by Carla Creaties and you can make a fall card. Or add the pot plants. Yeah, I could fiddle around with them for hours. That is what I mostly do. And that makes me so happy. These stamps always make me laugh. When you add text, you can even cover up the middle. And you won't notice any mistakes. Here a nice card on which I spent a lot of time creating it. I used the outline squares to stamp and heat emboss with gold embossing powder. Next I cut out the openings. 
In the back I used the outline circles combined with the little Christmas ornaments from the pot plants stamp set. I used ink and a water brush to fill up the open space between the circles. The Christmas hat, scarf and earmuffs look so cute on these funny birds. They are from the Christmas Hattie and Arctic Winter set. The text is from the Christmas guinea pig set. On the envelope I again used the text balloon to give the address a place. Also I used circles and Christmas ornaments. For stamping on the envelope I masked the hat before stamping the bird. What these solid stamps are also perfect for, and that goes for both square and round stamps, is for mirroring your stamps. Say for example you have this tiny fish and want it mirrored. This fish is from the Arctic Winter 2 series. And you need to have it look to the other side. So you have the fish now look swimming to the left, but you want it to swim to the right. Then there is a solution. I use VersaFine ink to demonstrate. First I will stamp the fish, like it normally would look like. Now we will make another fish that is exactly the same, but is mirrored. Ink up the fish clear stamp again and kiss this fish carefully onto the solid stamp. You can use any solid stamp. Lift the stamp straight up and take care not to slip. Now you use the solid stamp to stamp the fish on the paper. The clear stamp is sticky. You need to peel off the paper from the stamp. The first fish was still wet, of which I have now picked up some ink on the solid clear stamp. I could have prevented that by having the first fish dry first. But look, we now made two different fishes with the same stamp. Add a little heart with it. And we have a new idea for a card. Just one more. Using the larger solid stamp. I will mirror stamp this cute sheep. It is sometimes hard to get a super sharp impression. So press firmly on the stamp. When the lines are not crisp enough, you can use a fine liner to trace some of the lines. Another try for the same sheep. I kiss the sheep stamp on the solid rectangle. The solid stamp looks clean, but watch how the impression looks like. It is crisp now, but now I have a blot on the paper. You can immediately see how important it is to clean the solid stamp thoroughly before kissing the other stamp. So my tips? Clean and dry the solid stamp very thoroughly, then stamp the mirror image first and the normal image second. Let us play with these solid stamps and get every possible creative idea out of it. I still haven't showed everything that is possible. With some primary colors you can stamp the solid circles and get all different colors. On top of every color you can heat emboss the same primary colors of distress glaze. The colors mix and create crazy but also create gorgeous new colors. And when you have the solid stamps overlap each other, that is when you stamp a second stamp on top, you will get secondary and tertiary colors. So with this idea I experimented and created a new background for this ever cute Christmas hatchy. The hedgehog is colored with Tombow ABT alcohol markers and I used more or less the same colors for the lights as I did for the circles in the background. I planned on making a quick video, but while working with these simple but essential basic shapes, I discovered so many ways to use them that I could not resist not showing it all to you. I hope it was worth the wait and worth watching. Please share this video and leave a comment in the description. That helps in getting the views up and helps spreading the word that Carla Creati stamps are amazing. If you are interested in buying any of Carla Creatie's Craft Emotion stamps or any of the other products I used in this video, you can find affiliate links for them below the video in the descriptions. I'm working on the video with the basic storm paper and the text balloons. In that video there will be a giveaway 
for people who use my product links. Sponsored by Hobby Shop Online. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye bye!